All right, well, welcome back. Uh, I know it's not been too long, but uh, we are now going into Crystal Strahd, uh, trying to finish preparing for this campaign as uh, the group is quickly, quickly moving through the campaign. So, uh, jumping right into it today, uh, we're going to go ahead and take care of the Wizards of Wine. That seems to be the direction that they are heading, so let's just get that done as well. Um, Last time we took care of Chapter 8 and Chapter 15, uh, the Village of Kresk and the Werewolf Den. Uh, those are actually the starting points of where they're going, so that's what we're going to start with. Uh, needed to have covered first, um, but uh, we also know that the Wizard Wine is a location that they're going to be heading to. So, um, so Wizard of Wines. Let's pull up that sheet. Um, I want to, again, just because of how, I I tried a few modules that let it tear on top of each other, the maps, I don't like them, uh, they don't play out as well as I would like, so, um, we're just going to go with, um, Uh, side by side on the same sheet I think that's just gonna be the best bet so we are looking at uh, Wizards of Wines here we go yeah, yeah let's oh interesting I don't have the they're not numbered on here for me all right so we're gonna just create the scene um, and then we'll just change the size as we find out what we need. Um, Let's go ahead and get started with at least getting to the right area. Uh, that way, pulling these in won't take too bad. So we're looking at a 40 by 40, uh, so we're going to have to do a lot. 4,000 by 4,000, and we got three of these. I hate going big, but that, that's what we're going to need to do. Um, now, granted, thankfully, I'm not doing all four maps. Oh, that went vertical. Do I want vertical? Yes, I do. All right, the reason why I want to go vertical is because I'm going to have the second floor, main floor, and cellar. All right, let's open this up. Um, Oh, perfect. We're not too far off from where we need to be. Wizard of Wines. And I don't need it to be... There's the first floor, second floor, and the cellar. So, now for those to drop in. Uh, it is a little slower than what I would like, but that's because I'm using the forge and not local. Local, I've already got it pulled up and, and would be able to just drop it in. But, um... Internet service provider doesn't allow me to use uh, individual or yeah, ISP doesn't allow port forwarding, so that's kind of a bummer. But you know, is what it is. So let's see here. That that's the first floor. That's uh, all right. Here we go. They all populated. Uh, looks like they are pretty close to the size we needed. Which is pretty cool. But let's see here. Yeah, as I said, pretty close. Update. And there we go. Pull that 
down, pull this down. We're gonna go 4,000. Update. that. I'm going to highlight all three. We're going to lock them. That way they don't move. That's the last thing I need is for them to start shifting, being in the wrong spot. Okay. So, let's go ahead and at this point uh, do some walling. Quick generation of a thumbnail. We're going to also go in all right, here we go. Configuration. We can use um, basics to create a wall around the perimeter. Save those changes. That should be pretty spot on. Yeah, I want off a little bit. Yeah, just one drop. Not bad. Then we go right here. Add our light. And yeah, we're going to go right there. Make it so it provides vision and update light source. Now, if we are working in the middle of the day, there we go. That's what it would look like. That looks pretty good. Um, so, depending on the time of day, we'll de determine whether I am using. Um, the lighting, if I'll change it to global um, illumination or not. Um, so, for now, this is what we got. Alright. Uh, I'm not too worried about doing fencing out here. I do want to get wall right here, though. Let's just do our standard wall and get going. Uh, I need to be able to see the lines. Let's get that grid up and running. There we go. The reason why I do ethereal is because it gives the illusion of a wall um, and then also makes it so you can't really, um, or that, that way you can still pass through it. So, there's a reason for that. Wizards of Wine, I don't really have too many great mem or outstanding memories with it. I mean, it is what it is, really, is what my experience has been. Um, would be nice if there was, like, a 
great story behind it and stuff like that. Um, but the time that my current party that's been playing for so long, um, it hasn't really been a dramatic location for them. Um, this is, I guess, the most interesting thing is that they played, um, what the fuck's up with that for the second time here. Um, but I mean, even still, like, not really great, you know, not really anything great story-wise to drive anything. Um, they came in, they cleared out what the problem was really quickly. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a very boring pl location in my opinion. too far there because there's a window there's not too many windows here so it's easy to overlook them all right um, a lot of columns music is just looping. Let's go ahead, let's get somebody else in here. Let's go with... Well, let's see what the shop NPCs have. I don't think... Oh, hold on. Yep, that was going to be blasting our ears off. Let's change these sounds. Don't need to destroy an ear. And the witch. Ooh, if I would have known there was a witch where play play or track. Okay, so I've heard this playlist a few times then. Alright. Um, I hate that there's windows in these, uh, tower, uh, but it is what it is, I guess. Alright, um, let's go ahead and get some elemental walls to, uh, take care of these columns. Uh, I am pasting these, but I'm not too worried about getting them perfect, just because I do plan on uh, coming through and making some adjustments anyways. Well, I'd, I'd make some adjustments by um, making it so that they s snapped a grid. Draw a new wall. Here we go. Oh, that needs to drop a little bit more. So, uh, it, it'll be interesting to be, you know, done with Curse of Strahd um, because, like, this group that I'm, I've been running for uh, 16 mon months now. Um, I mean, we took Saturday off from playing. Chris Stroud because I was feeling a little bit of burnout and uh, we just 
sat around and watched uh, the new animated series Legend of Vox Machina. Or it's the season two of it, anyways, not the new series. But um, it, it's been good because it's built those relationships. Um, something I've always had a hard time with in my life. And so um, it's kind of bittersweet to know that it was built around um, the Curse of Strahd campaign and that that is now coming to an end. But at the same time, um, I'm okay with that because like, we all want to keep playing together as a group and and they're okay with me trying to um, take us in a different direction from um, from D&D &D. so alright now this one's interesting cause normally oh I gotta be careful Normally I would uh, call it good, or I would try to minimize how many points there are. Um, this one I'm actually just, I'm just gonna leave it at this size. What I am gonna do though is I'm gonna do this, and what this does is it makes it so that there's a little stupid peg at the end, but it also makes it so I can take these, grab these, merge those, say that, 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 and oh, I, I gotta do this one as well. Uh, that are, um, well, let's just draw a glass window. Yeah, whatever. I'm going to delete that anyways. Um, well, let's get this one in first, I guess. There we go. Uh, we need to change that to a wall. And we're going to good. With the exception of this. I'm going to delete that. Grab that, plop it there. Um, we'll just make that one wall. And now we'll just grab all the windows. Update. Perfect. Nope. Now we want the select tool. No more circles. Delete that. All right. Um, and then just because it's easier to do it this way, I'm going to create these doors that way, like that. And we're going to say door update. Now, uh, the sliding barn doors, we've got a few, a few of them. Uh, I'm going to do something else with them. I'm going to put them right here. So there's that one, um, and then here's this one. All right, with that, let's go ahead and grab all of our doors. Single and double. That way we can make them doors. Single, double, sliding, extra spacious with too much more going on than it needs to. Yep, that's the door I want. All right, doors. Now I do know a lot of these are locked, barred. Um, so, um, easy way to do it is just from the uh, player view side. Uh, that one's not. Yep, 
think that's everything on those. Let's see what the second floor looks like. Um, pretty similar to this floor. Um, yeah. I was hoping I could just copy stuff over from the other floor. I think the... Oh, I did forget those walls. I think the best I'm going to get is uh, to try and... Um, Highlight and grab those. All right, that wasn't too bad. No, that wasn't bad at all. I do like that the windows line up. That makes it nice and convenient. Okay. Yeah, it looks like I'm having trouble connecting with Twitch tonight. Okay. Well, I'm going to just ball this map off and call it good for tonight then. Um, So yeah, um, my groups, I am looking at moving to a different game system. Looking at, um, largely I'm looking at a game system called Savage Worlds. Um, <laughs> so far it is completely different than what I've played so far with D&D. And that's a nice little change, um, because I don't, while fantasy has always been kind of like my love and passion, um, even before I got into D&D, &D, um, because I mean like Lord of the Rings and all those sorts of things, um, even books like Aragon were just huge to me. Um, I think what I really would love to do is something totally different and sci-fi, kind of like Star Wars, because that's been another love of my life and passion was Star Wars. Um, but 
I mean, th to me, that's another little heartbreak because, you know, um, I hate what Disney has done with it. Um, they, they've Disneyfied it. And I don't care for that. But, I mean, I don't own it. I don't have the money to own it. So, um, not much sense in me complaining about it. So, do what I can. And um, the game systems I have seen for Star Wars, I have not been too impressed with. Or they were tied up with uh, the OGL 1.0A. And I mean heavily tied up with it because uh, it was called Star Wars 5e. <laughs> so, you know, 100% reliant on um, Wizards of the Coast to not come after them, basically. Which is kind of sucky because, you know, Wizards has been doing s dumb stuff. And so, I gotta be careful on what game systems I want to go after to play so uh, right now figuring the best bet is to uh, go with the game system that's universe free um, it doesn't have a stick stuck in the mud hey this is the universe you have to work with um, which is what you get with Savage Worlds it's very open to hey you want to play here with this kind of setup great you can do that um, so if I wanted to do um, Star Wars I easily could if I wanted to do something more along the lines of um, high fantasy D&D aesthetic also easily doable so um, it's just it's crazy. So, let's see here. Yeah, so I'm looking at Savage Worlds quite heavily, um, but I also have been invited to, tr or I've been encouraged by my players to try Pathfinder, second edition. Um, and so, uh, since there's a lot of interest there, I mean, they sold out eight months of supplies in two weeks. Um, <laughs> uh, that, I, that's just crazy. Um, because, I mean, stock like that is not easy to replenish. Um, so it's amazing to see that happen for a company. So um, I guess that's just going to push forward the, uh, hey, our next run of books won't have LGL 1.0a in it because of this whole situation. Uh, we're going to see those books a lot sooner. <laughs> But it'll it'll be interesting to see what it uh, what becomes of this whole situation. But uh, yeah, I am done with D and D. I'm done with Wizards of the Coast. I'm done with Hasbro. Uh, they have burned bridges, and in my opinion, whatever comes to them, uh, they deserve. And whatever comes to other companies, Paizo, Cobalt Press. Um, they, des they too deserve what comes to them because they've expressed where their loyalties lie um, this is definitely more of a ranty video than what I've normally done <laughs> um, but I don't 
it, it kind of gets boring when you've done walls over and over and over again. Um, it's not like I'm showing you guys anything now. I'm just here talking and getting through prepping for Curse of Strahd. Um, for my, I guess this would be the f third time I've done this. Um, because I did this once already when I helped a group uh, create the this world um, with the Wizards of the Coast maps. Granted, <laughs> that had the isometric maps for Castle Ravenloft and there wasn't anything we could do with them because like, either you play isometric or you don't. You play 2D. You play flat. Um, and like all of us that were working on this project at the time, all we did was 2D. And so it's like, we don't know what to do with this. And so we kind of, <laughs> kind of missed out on the largest maps in the campaign. No, granted, I did grab some other maps from elsewhere to use for 2D Curse of Strahd. But still, like, there's just, when you've spent thousands, and I'm not joking, uh, thousands of hours in Curse of Strahd, setting it up, preparing it, reading over the module, uh, learning about the different creatures, trying to figure out your strategies for Strahd, and then adding in your own touches, like, doing these maps over and over and over and over again they get boring they get tedious um, it's just yeah it's draining I mean there's only so many times you can wall a map um, it doesn't change really Um, I'm actually going to change this map up a little bit because I don't need gosh I'm going to hate myself for this um, I don't need you alright so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop some of these but uh, I don't have an option to crop them so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take all my walls thankfully I'm not changing the X I'm just changing the Y um, actually let's do this I'm gonna remove 12 from the top and from the bottom so 24 so that's that's 2400 that's that's a huge chunk right there um, now as for this one down here I'm gonna remove uh, another five uh, 50 by 60 so that's another 22 so I'm removing I'm cutting out 46 uh, that is a huge chunk that is this tile and then six more uh, I'm just gonna move this up so I can manage it when it gets moved um, There are actually, since they're all going to get moved, I know this one is going up there. There. And we need to bring it up. There we go. Now, walling. Walling. 
Oh, I don't want all. So escape. I need to just select what I would need to move. Here. Here. That's just a little shy of where I need it to actually be. There we go. Oh, just a touch over. So we need to subtract 46 from our number. So we've got 12,000 minus 46. We're at 74. That's going to help out a lot. So grid, there we go, 7,400. 7, upgrade. Okay. Yes. And it looks like I'm actually going to have to adjust just a touch more because, yep. Alright. So I guess it was kind of a waste to move all those walls. But, I mean, we got it so that we can still use them. So that's good. Uh, that's the important part. Let's see here. There we go. Now, let's go ahead, let's configure. Uh, we're gonna go basic, basis, add in walls. Let's see what those walls look like. Oh, interesting. Oh no, it squished all those walls that I had just done. Oh. Oh, that's frustrating. So now the question is, do I... I gotta scrap all my walls. That That is frustrating. Oh. There's uh, nothing more than that that really sh frustrates me, as uh, there is with having to uh, do what you've already done again. I mean, we can still go up another 400. Yeah, we've already screwed it up enough. May as well do it. So we're going down to 7,000. So that we're only adding on 3,000 to what the base was. So it's not bad.
Well, there's that. configure everything before you get started. <laughs> 40 minutes in and I get to start it over again. Like I said, it, it gets boring and tedious to do this hundreds of times. Well, not hundreds, but a few hundred. Yeah, this, this is the most tedious part for prepping, is the frickin' walls. Especially a place like this, where it's rather meticulous walls. Um, or, yeah, the tedious little walls like this, where it's like straight lines, but then you got your other walls, and they aren't... They don't just flow. Because, like, if I could just start at one point and do my uh, pauses like I am right now for Windows um, and just keep going and get the whole thing done in one continuous strand, uh, that's still not great, but it's doable. It's bearable. But where I'm just having to make so many stops and changes starting over in so many places it's rough um, now the werewolf den where I was able to put, put it on a drag a drag and draw that, that was nice it was convenient um, but this this is not See, even my copies got squished. Uh, darn shame. Oh, I guess we're just gonna have to trudge through. Get it done again. So yeah, Curse of Strahd's been a great module for me. Um, I mean, I was introduced to it by... Well, I was introduced to D&D by my brother. Um, but he also introduced me to Curse of Strahd. Um, now, I would not ever play in a campaign where he's DMing again, because I don't care for his DMing. Uh, he very much had the DM versus player mentality which I am not a proponent of. Um, but also it was very much, hey, if someone miss it, can't make it, we're not playing, even if it's just one player. Um, that was, to me, frustrating because 
we all have different schedules and when we all agree on one time and then someone has to drop because of X, Y, or Z, like, we, we get it, life happens, but why should everybody be punished for someone not being able to make it? Like, I mean, <laughs> if you look at Critical Role and The Legend of Vox Machina, Campaign 1, uh, Ashley Johnson was gone quite frequently. What would have happened to Critical Role if every Thursday that Ashley was gone, they said, hey, sorry guys, we can't have a campaign this week, Ashley's gone. <laughs> like, there would have been so many different things so many changes uh, from there and where we're at now with Legend of Vi or with um, Critical Role uh, it's just crazy how far uh, things have changed and like what could have been if they had done that because they would have been in the scheduling spiral of death now um, might they have done one shots to take care of the time that she was gone. Yeah, maybe. It would have been a good way to do it if they decided that was the way they were going to do it. And I'm glad they didn't do it the way, that way. Because, um, it, it's just bad to have that spiral, in my opinion. So. But, I mean, I'm not Legend, I'm not Critical Role, I'm not Vox Machina, or my group's not Vox Machina anyways. Um, they might wish they were that good, but they're not. Or I guess technically that bad, which they kind of are. <laughs> um, but yeah. Alright. Oh. Doors. So. Hmm. Oh boy, now I've got the hiccups. This is going to be fun. Alright. Now, what I don't mind doing is I don't mind helping people set up and uh, create their worlds. Uh, that is actually something I would do for a commission. That uh, is not bad I mean really if you think about it um, someone asking hey I need th these kind of scenes this many uh, prepared and you just go about you prepare them you say here you go this is what I've got for you with the art that they provide because um, you know if they it's not right for me to take somebody else's art like from DM Andy, Seafoot Games, uh, Tom Cartos. I, it's not right for me to take their artwork unless it's the f free published versions that they put out and use it. And But I would have to make sure, hey, this is the art that you're using. It's their free version. If you want the paid version, go get their paid versions. Let me go ahead and import it as a scene and I'll work with it as I need. Um, and that way they have ownership of the art and there's no nothing wrong with it and then I can just come in walled off for them. Um, and honestly that's actually pretty easy to do with the Forge. Uh, if you have a Forge account I just come in as an assistant GM, help set up, and when I'm done setting up you just delete my account and we're good. But I mean, it, it's interesting because 
people have such an issue with uh, people getting paid for doing stuff for D&D. Or any tabletop, really, because it's not just D&D. Uh, like I said, Savage Worlds, Pathfinder. People have issues with people getting paid for dealing with games. <laughs> and I don't get why. Um, because, I, I mean, I see both sides of the co conversation. Um, D game Master should do it for free. Mm, no. No. Uh, because I, I disagree with that point. Game Masters should do it for free. No. they. I think they should do it for free for their friends while they're learning. Um, I, and I, I, I would say they should do it for free for their friends. That I can agree with. But with, on the same side, you've got there is a demand for game masters. And so now you're meeting supply and demand. So you gotta meet that somewhere. So. Individually. Uh, hmm. Let's do this. Actually, we're going to make terrain walls again, but we're going to do it inside the barrel. Actually, we're going to make them regular walls. That works better. Uh, and really, like all these barrels, difficult terrain. I just feel it in my voice that I am just emotionally done with having to set up campaigns like this. Um, I get it if it's one scene or something like that, but um, just the constant campaign setup, it's getting to me. It really is, um, which is kind of... Well, I mean, it is what it is, really. Um, at, at some point, it's just tiresome. And so, I mean, thankfully, I've got a great group of friends that I've been running Curse of Stride for now for 16 months. And we've all said, hey, we're going to each run a different game system for about a month to test out uh, this new or test out some other systems because not, we don't agree with what Wizards has done and that's that, I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only one that feels that way in my group uh, because it makes it less stressful for me but um, 
I just I feel bad because I just started a new campaign uh, we're going into our fourth session of Curse of Strahd and that's the group we're setting up for and like I'm just done um, and it feels bad because like this is a pay to play campaign that I'm running for them but yeah emotionally I'm just done I'm checking out and uh, it kind of sucks really it sucks to be burnt out uh, especially when you came into this unknown not knowing anything not knowing where it would take you uh, to have a passion lit and then just for the wind to be taken out of your sails um, it's it's tough really is Let's see here. So I have the headset, um, Steel Series uh, 7. My wife got it for me for Christmas a few years ago. Uh, actually, it might have just been this last year. Uh, they keep cutting out. Uh, it's really kind, of, really frustrating and annoying. I've reached out to their te technical support, and um, well, I continue to have the issue. So obviously, it didn't work right. So. If someone has recommendations, I'll gladly hear it. Um, but, yeah. It looks like Sundays are not the days to get recommendations. So. Let's see here. Um, yeah. Almost done with walling. And then, like I said, um, I'm just, I'm drained. Um,
dang it. Looks like windows are it. up a few of these doors again and then call it good mm, this one's a little low mm, a lot of these tracks are actually loud I think that locks up most of the doors. That don't look right. I know that's not right. Alright, let's take a look at the cellar. Um, try saving it, see what it looks like. Um, I bet you it's a 20 by 20 map. Save image. 20 by 20. easier based off of that uh, but we need to move it a little bit let's also get this light where it should be there okay I haven't fixed that walling yet either I don't look like it fits. All right. Oh, we also still have to move this just a bit. Okay. And I just realized that I forgot some medicine this afternoon for my toddler who was teething, or not toddler, infant. Ugh. teeth hurt and it is truly a nightmare. over this one was quick and easy I don't mind it uh, the only thing I'm resting is walls uh, this one's not gonna be too bad oh. except for the fact that we need to go this way enter uh, we'll do the same thing over here
difference is we need to flip it. Connect you there and connect you. Well, that one's gone. This one's here. And we'll have to highlight that little section and delete that. Uh, we also have a door. Now, for these posts, um, I'm just going to do ethereals. Nah. Let's look at terrain walls. Let's do a box. Yep, that's what we'll do. I know, more walls, but really, it fits best. Like I said, just get them out and then just move them into place correctly. All right, uh, we're going to be done with the Wizards of Wine here in just a second. Um, It's interesting because, like, I told my players the other day, hey, um, for this new group, hey, when we got started, there's going to be places that are deadly. Um, if you run into them, you run into them. I'm not going to call all you and protect you. Um, that also being said, if they runs into a TPK, I guess, I guess at that point I just let them say, hey. Well, I guess the uh, that that was a short-lived run of Curse of Strut. So, yeah, I don't know. I I don't know. I don't want to be a butthead, and I don't want to discourage them. But at the same time, I'm also like, I want to move away from 5e. I want to learn something new. And uh. It just sucks. It really does. Um, because, like, like I've said, I've put a lot of time and energy and effort into Curse of Strahd, uh, into this world, and the world I've got from my other players. And for it to just be... to just feel like I've been let down, or just to feel like Wizards is done with the people who actually play their games. Um, it's very disappointing. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they went after uh, Magic the Gathering, since they couldn't get away with going after D&D. &D. Um, I, I don't know. It's just This is a bad time to be affiliated with Wizards, in my opinion. Uh, Wizards and Hasbro. I don't, I personally don't want anything to do with either one of them. So. Alright, well, that looks like that is going to be it. Um, looks like we have completed the Wizards of Wine. Uh, the only thing missing was actors. Not too worried about that tonight. Um, I think with Chapter 8 and Chapter 15, uh, the group is going to have plenty to worry about. Um, so uh, it'll be interesting to see what the party does how they interact with things and uh, we will just go from there so um, tomorrow night I do not have a live stream Tuesday night we are in Crystal Strahd uh, with campaign 23 or campaign 2023 with uh, our group of adventurers uh, we are still looking for more players I have been trying to promote, I've been trying to recruit more um, 
but we need, we haven't gotten responses. We need people to sign up. Well, we don't need them, but we would greatly appreciate more people joining. Um, like the players have said, it is a small group and it makes it difficult. Uh, we are doing three hour sessions now, 8.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 11.30 Pacific. So, um, till Tuesday. Have a good night and we'll talk to you later.